forgotten and lost our clapper, which if you remember the clapper, that's what you use in film when you come up to the camera and you clap it real good. We also have a different set of clappers. Maybe that's why the name has been changed here in the studio. This is our new set of clappers. They're doing an amazing job grabbing things like perhaps this. Oh, can't grab the glass when it's cold with these because it's not sticky. So I guess having the glass at a thousand degrees when you're putting it away, grab it with the clappers and it grabs real nice. But I'm not gonna mess around with the finished products, folks. This is the annealer reveal. It's Thursday morning. It's a little bit cold in here right now, so we're wearing our sweaters and whatnot. Uh, but we got three of us, Matt, Oliver, myself in here. Joey and Chris are coming in for the late shift because we got a happy hour tonight. So be in at noon. But uh, we're here to show you guys what went down on this previous Tuesday show. So I'm going to show you guys, take a general overview of all this. You can see our uh, GA Champions Cup here with a fresh new signature on it. Number 204, it says Oliver right there. We're going to have to hire that guy that buffs the Stanley Cup to come down here and buff out our GA Stanley Cup. Uh, but he's on in route to come down here. Pretty sweet with a Detroit puddle right on the side of it. Um, Congratulations to Oliver and his debut show, making it on the board. We had some pretty sweet pieces. This was clearly a uh, Easter and springtime theme show, an extravaganza show. Uh, we started off with, I think the first piece of the show was this egg that I made here. They're all on our GA bases. Even though these ones, we had the ability to stamp the bottom of them, uh, these eggs, turned out incredible and I'll put it right on our spinning sweet platform we can get a good zoom on it but as I turn it you can notice there's that whiter spot there and if you guys watch the show you may watch out the reason it's not working right now is because we have a perfect GA stamp on it so it almost would stand on its own like that but who knows? We're going to make our own case for this, a specific uh, platform for this as a celebratory uh, breaking down of the wall to start the bar uh, egg. And what I did was I laid this whole chunk right here onto a piece of brick that was blasted from off the wall into the hot shop and melted the brick. It actually stuck to the side of it. There must be some kind of goo within it and it put off a bunch of nasty smells, but the color didn't stick on this side. At least the frit didn't stick because that was colder from that. So in essence, this has the essence of our celebratory wall breaking down and building of the beverage counter. The night that the day that we received the liquor license in full through all the uh, steps that it takes to get one of those. So. That's pretty awesome and pretty amazing news. And that piece will be represented in the bar next to a bunch of other things and a bunch of a million ideas that we have. Next up, Chris went, I think, straight for this jumbo nest bowl. This thing's a honker. It's huge. You could almost wear it as a hat and it would probably be too big. But look at, he's got multiple pinks and purples in the body. And then you got a gold, amazing, nesty action with no Pringles cans, lids in there whatsoever. It actually, I spoke about the way that nest bowls can lean usually one way or the other. This particular bowl, because of the weight of it and the way it was made, it actually sits one way like that and it's pretty darn symmetrical. A little bit of a lean, so I'd say facing you guys, this would be the front side. You fill it up with chips or uh, newspaper, crinkles, or whatever you would like. Put your eggs on top and or put your food and your snacks in there, and that's super sweet. It turned out amazing. The trim was pretty hardcore. When Chris, Chris went across this with his hand, he had wrapped a paper towel over it, and Oliver uh, was shielding him at the same time. And then Oliver got to learn how to bring some of these larger bits and lay them down. And we were bringing uh, 
extra gathers, we probably did five or six about this size that we brought over and laid down on the side of the piece. It's a hefty boy and uh, it's a beauty. It's also for sale. I think a couple of these other pieces sold on the show, both the one egg that was for sale and the chick. So this piece is the remaining piece and it is a jumbo. It's a pretty uh, sizable piece. It took Chris, he was maxing out the hole over there. Um, he did actually tag the door in one spot and brush that off and cleaned it up real nice because uh, it was a tight, tight squeeze. So check that one out on the website, Gathering Point page. Uh, the next piece we did, I jumped in and made another egg. This one sold pretty instantly. Look at this guy, that basket weave texture. It's pretty heady. And you look at the top, it's got a little spiral. You look at the bottom, got the GA stamp on it. This egg looks kind of like a Fabergé or like some kind of really fancy high-end egg. It's pretty darn thin too. So if you accidentally drop it, it would crack open and a giant ocelot would come out of the egg. Well, we just figured out what an ocelot was yesterday. We had a bunch of people inquiring and it turns out it's like a little cheetah, I think. So anyway, I don't think they come from eggs either, but it'd be cool. It'd be a sweet animal if it came from that egg. Then Chris went ahead and made his own color mixture and made one of these chicks. This is one of our classic. I'm holding it up, but maybe the lighting's gonna be better for this guy if we put him right there. This is a super sweet color pattern. Super cool piece. Has yet to get the legs on it. I haven't had a chance yesterday to do that, so that'll be getting done today before it ships out uh, to Taryn and Sue Schmidt. If I remember correctly, this one might be going to Sue. But uh, look at how bright the eyes are. You got the beautiful tail feather right back there. And then the color mixture you made is amazing. And my favorite part, ooh, ooh, that's pretty cool. My favorite part is this curl right on top. Look at that head curl. This guy's amazing. We're gonna sign at Glass Academy right here, get two metal legs, kind of like little chicken uh, chick eggs coming down, handmade, super cool. And this one's gonna be shipping out today out to Indiana, if I'm not mistaken. So that one's amazing, beautiful color pattern. And I tried to use Chris's scraps and use the rest of that color pattern. Once you mix up a color uh, group like that of a bunch of different colors, you can't just put it back in their respective bins. It's just too tedious or too much work. So I used the rest of the color now. This is an interesting example of colors that will have a color reaction. Maybe not if you layer them, but if you swirl and mix them together, too much swirlage leads to browns. And that's what uh, we've been talking about that in the studio here and talking about the different ways to use color so it doesn't brown out and it doesn't have that uh, crazy look to it. There's nothing wrong with this. We've got a beautiful gold streak on a couple different spots here. It's super wavy and super natural, but it wasn't the colors I was expecting coming out of this. So it's a little interesting. It's got some serious, I mean, the swirls are beautiful because it was just a natural super letting it drip down off the pipe and swirling it back up. So it's got a lot of flow to the egg. Um, and some beautiful dark, deep kind of maroons and some uh, copper rubies and a little bit of brown in there and some golds. It's a beautiful color, but a pretty cool example for everyone to notice that difference between the two. Just that little bit of brightness um, and that little bit of transparency coming from the chick makes a little bit of a difference in the piece. And that's what you get. You never know when you're putting it in the box. You never know what's coming out. You can be confident in one color, one coat of one color, but when you start swirling it up, layering them, mixing them up, uh, anything could happen. And that's just building your glass color knowledge repertoire. So that's it right there, folks. It was a beautiful show. We're gonna be getting into production here. We're doing a bunch of other things. We got some nest bowls to make from the show. We've got uh, uh, a lot of things to do, which is awesome. So we're gonna get back to it. We appreciate you guys. Thanks to our VIP supporters, the folks that uh, pay $4.99 a month 
to support these shows, the streaming, get exclusive content when we can get around to it with our new tech guru and uh, get first pick at brand new products, folks. That's gonna be the snakes coming up next. We're pumping them out. You guys are gonna get your first choice uh, of your favorite color. We're gonna do some pre-orders on it and you guys will be picking out the first round then we'll open it up to the general public. So we appreciate you guys. Hope you all have an amazing Thursday and looking forward to next Tuesday. Sunday's gonna be an amazing experimental show. You're gonna wanna watch that one. We got a, quite a few nice ones lined up. So kick it with us on Sundays, kick it with us on Tuesdays, and have an amazing rest of your week, you guys.